we've had a few questions on how we build our uh, chicken tractor for our meat birds. So we're going to make a quick video on how I did it and why I designed it. Um, I did steal this idea in part from Joel uh, Salting. He's a guru, farming guru down south. Um, look him up if you haven't. Um, and then like almost all my ideas and creations, I basically see someone else's and then I create and edit it to however suits our needs the most. Um, so this is our third version of uh, the chicken tractor. The first one's in pieces over there. That one didn't work as well. Um, so this one so far has probably been our best version. Um, yeah, I'll just walk over, walk through what we use. So the bottom is two by six, um, green treated, two by six framing all the way around, and the the remaining parts of it is mainly two by three green treated. I did two by three um, simply because it's a little bit lighter. Um, you don't want anything too heavy, and you just have to be really selective because two by three wood often can be really have a lot of bends or twists, um, cracks. So it is a little bit trickier to work with. But in my experience, um, it's cheaper and it makes it much, much lighter. Um, and then our original one was metal roofing, but the chickens would get really, really hot, especially in like July. Um, in Minnesota, July gets very, very hot. So I noticed that they were constantly drinking tons of water, really, really hot, and we'd always lose two, three to the heat. So then I switched to this stuff, which I've used on chicken coops before, and this is PVC light roofing. Um, so it's literally like the same thing you would use for like plumbing pipes, PVC um, roofing, and it's very light. It doesn't get hot the same way metal roofing does. Um, but I will say, if you're in cold weather climates, one thing I've noticed it gets really brittle. One of our sheet um, shelters is made out of this stuff, and they beat the crap out of it. And I'm probably not going to use that for that. But in the off season, uh, put it in a place it won't be touched or it won't get a ton of snow because it will get a little brittle in the winter and it will have a tendency to crack. And there is a certain way that it needs to stay up. So the sticker here, this is the side that has to stay up and that's the side that's UV protected so it doesn't become as brittle and break as easily. Um, and then these are just pole barn screws which I think work better than the ones that are actually uh, made for these sheets. Um, and then for the chicken wiring, it's just your typical hard cloth or hard Oh, yeah, hard wire chicken wiring. It's not your typical cheap chicken wire. Um, I did use the the more traditional hexagon chicken wire before, and uh, Fox ripped that one open pretty quick. So then I had to switch to this stuff with half inch staples, uh, just to get secured. And then every so often I do have uh, fencing staples, the big huge guys. You can see one here. I had to be real careful. That one was about to split. And I put those ones every like foot or two just to help get the, um, keep those wires down because a really determined coyote or fox could rip those out if they really wanted to, which we've had happen before. Um, yep, yeah, and then everything else is really, really simple construction. Um, these are the handles here to move it. Probably the biggest question we get is on the wheel itself, the paddle. So this is the old one here, and I pulled this one off, so it's a really simple design with non-treated wood, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, it's just a two by six, and I just had to troubleshoot this. Um, so basically the design is, is the wheel gets put on here. So depending on what kind of wheel it is, this one is a um, five, five eighths. So this is running a five eighths bolt um, with a wing nut on it. Um, and then on the inside is a locking nut on this side. So this side here, and then there is a, if you can get in here, there is a block here to help separate it because you can't have it right next to the coop or it'll grind and wear on the coop and it won't flip for very well. So this is kind of a spacer. And this one, so this bolt, this carriage bolt here goes through the panel, the spacer, and the two by six on the other side. So that, that one's, that one's like almost, I think it's a 12 inch bolt with a locking nut screw on the inside and then washers in here to help with the spacing and the rubbing. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Oh, well, you can see it. Um, so the design is quite simple. Basically, the wheel goes here. There's a cutout here to rotate it. 
and then it flips all the way over which we'll show here in a second and it lands on this screw that sticks out or this bolt I should say that sticks out so in action so it's very similar to this where the wheel comes up it's very light flips all the way over and it comes back down and now this one needs to be tightened because it's fanning out a little bit so I'll just tighten that up and then now we can move because now this back end is elevated off the ground and then there's a two by four on the bottom on here to keep them from coming in there which if you have a cold weather state like we are the spring can be quite chilly especially at night and same thing with the falls even the summers we're we're in july and we're still getting nights that get down to uh, 58 59 degrees which is pretty chilly in the middle of summer um, i did design this part just for them to get off the ground um, and then get out of the rain as well because um, there is times where it gets pretty rainy here so I haven't seen too many other people do anything like this. I think this is unique to my design, but they seem to use it quite a bit so they can get off the ground, especially in the rain and on the chilly nights. And this is actually stolen from the last one. I just ripped this off and put it on this one. So there's definitely some things I would change on this, but it works. And then this one flips. I did sand down the handles just to make it a little bit smoother. Nothing crazy there. And then now once it's up, it's really easy to move. Gotta move the water so fluid. Sticky, humid. And they freak out the first several times they're in here, and then once they kind of get the hang of it, they'll start moving with you for the most part. Come on, girls. And we do move it about twice, twice a day, especially once they get big. The first week or so that they're out here um, only needs to be moved once um, and usually we'll move it so I'll give them food in the morning like right away in the morning and they'll eat that food and they'll <laughs> it's like they crap half of it right back out and then then I'll move it after that so otherwise then they just sit in their poop all day so that's their morning feed and you can see how much how much is left behind in here it's quite amazing how much they poop it's insane and that's only about 27 chickens and once it's in spot just flip it back over same thing on the other side make sure you pull it far enough so you don't have to walk through food. When lifting and lowering the tractor make sure none of your chickens get stuck along the edging so they don't get hurt that's it, pretty simple. Nothing too complicated about it. And then we, like, over here we have the door that you saw me use to get the food in and out. There is, I do have eye hooks in here. It's really sticky because it's humid here right now. I do have eye hooks in here. So if I want to hang the food, I can. But they go through the food and water so fast that I really don't need to. Like that water is a three and a half gallon water tank. And we fill it at least twice a day these birds just go through an insane amount of water one last feature I added to this coop that or tractor I should say that I don't have on the other ones is for the tricky thing for us so far has been trying to uh, when we go to harvest them uh, capturing them so what I did the last time is I would kind of pick up the tractor wait for one to run out and then I would set it back down and then I will go catch it because they're so slow, uh, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So this, with this one, I came up with this idea where I left a little gap between the uh, back roof cover here and the framing here. I left a little gap thick enough for a piece of plywood and then a couple two by threes on the bottom to catch that plywood. And my idea is I haven't tried it yet. So it's interesting to see if it'll work this time around is that when it comes before you go to call them, you typically don't give them food 12 to 24 hours. So that way there's nothing in their GI tract or anything like that. Um, so they're, they want food. So I was thinking about baiting them by getting them up in here with some food. And then once they get up in here, then dropping a piece of plywood in this little track 
to keep them pinned in here. And then they can't get out and then I can just one by one go grab them because I waste so much time trying to grab them. And it's just me and Sarah doing all this stuff. So it's, it takes a lot of time doing all that. So this is the new feature on this one. I'm really curious to see if it works out. So maybe in the next time we call, we'll make a video of that. So some people might wonder why we do the chicken tractor idea um, rather than just having them roam or having them enclosed. Um, one, the obvious is because they get fresh grass every day. So every day, as Joel, Joel Salton, 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 Salton says, um, fresh salad bar every day. Um, so they're on fresh grounds, they're, they're pasture raised, and on top of it, everything we're giving them, they're putting back into the ground for us. So this is just moved minutes ago. So this is basically a little manure from last night, and then their morning feed. And this is everything they push back out, which looks really gross and disgusting. It's going to be swarmed with flies here by noon. But then if you look at last night, so this is yesterday's here, last evening. And this would be yesterday's morning. This would be a couple days ago. This one clearly was left longer than the other two. <laughs> it's a little more worn down and beat up. But you can already see it's starting to break down. The color's changing. Same thing here. We're already getting to a point. This is only, what, three days ago? Mm -hmm. It's already getting to a point where it's broken down to the point that you could easily walk across and not even realize you walked into a little poop, poop pile. That, that chicken tractor is six by 10. A little bit more in this one. Fast forward. Hopefully this will be a really good example. I hope the camera can show it. Uh, but this is where the chickens were literally just a couple of weeks ago. And you can see a completely different color between the so where the chicken tractor was and where the soil typically is. So it's much, much greener just in this little box right here compared to the rest of the soil. And this soil on the property is probably the worst soil. It's up on a hill next to some pine trees. It's really sandy. The, the ground's terrible right here. But it shows how much benefit it is having a chicken tractor, how much nutrients they put back into the soil. And if, I don't know if the camera will show up, but you can literally see every spot the chicken tractor was going all the way back and even around. And you're going to be able to do the same thing with this other chicken tractor running this way as well. And it, every time we go through here, the soil just gets richer and richer and richer. And it really adds nutrients back to the soil. And then once we have the sheep come through here as well, they add another layer to it. And hopefully in time, the, the grounds here will be just full of nutrients for these guys. Because when we first moved here, there was no farming, no nothing here. And we've slowly started to build the proper environment for thriving for our chickens and for our sheep as well. So it's not just about the meat you're getting, it's not just about the price or the quality, it's all those things plus what they're putting back into the soil for you that you can use later. Because if we decide to expand the garden here, this soil is going to now be much, much better from it. Because when we first started the garden, we had to bring in so much dirt because the soil was not where we wanted it to be and we had to fast track it so we could get it rolling we had to spend a bunch of money but doing all this stuff we'll cut that out if we decide to expand it in the future so this was the second chicken tractor i made very similar design to the other one um, but as you can see this one's not as nice as the newest one um, the, i learned what worked well on this one and what needed to be improved i needed more roofing I needed more support. I was hoping those would be stronger. It's not like the metal roofing where you really don't need a whole lot of support under them. Um, and then I also had to run the hardwood. This is the one that got broken into last year that we lost some chickens to a fox. Um, but one thing that is on both of them I didn't talk about was um, these braces here. So I have braces on each corner here and down there. And the reason why that is is just simply because you're putting a lot of torque on them, picking them up and down constantly. It probably doesn't need it, but it's better to have it 
and then have to deal with it later because if that starts to split starts to go then you're going to constantly be behind that so rather than deal with that i just save time put some braces on them that way i can lift them up torque them the ground here is very uneven so it bends and twists and that will add another layer of support to your frame which so i think these are very important to have but so this is the other one not as not as well made as the other one and the other one this one has a um i use the roofing for a lid here and it's a little bit bigger than the other one which is nicer but i like the wire wire opening more no real reason i just cosmetically i like it better i think this looks a little more chunky i like things to look nice one one thing that would that i did differently on um, this one versus that one is this back lip that they can get up on i had it i had the two by four tie on the top of the two by six so there'd be a little there's about a inch about an inch um gap on the bottom i wouldn't do that on that one over there the original one i showed you i dropped that two by four all the way to the bottom because just that one little inch makes a huge difference for clearance on this coop we consistently have chickens get underneath that which is why i have this right here because then i have to push them back into the chicken tractor because they get underneath that lip just with that one inch clearance difference so if you do decide to do something similar to us here or even on that back and you don't want to do that make sure you run that all the way flush with the ground with your two by six because they will get that little because in all if you do cornish hen or cornish cross crosses they're not super smart birds they're really not they they just want to sit around and eat that's all they want to do <laughs> so when you go to move this there's going to be two or three of them that literally won't move until that backboard hits them in the butt and then they'll get up and start moving and it, with that um, piece it's very likely they'll get swooped underneath and if you're finding your tractor is really really high off the ground your panel holes um, are probably too high so you're gonna have to re-drill them lower because when I showed you guys that panel those holes took me a while to figure out exactly where they go because you don't want them to be too high because then if you lift it up like a big old monster truck those chickens are gonna get uh, passed over constantly because nothing's gonna encourage them to move forward so with this panel or paddle I should say with this paddle the, the hardest part for me was figuring out where to put the holes because where you put the holes on here and where you put the holes in there to secure it all to the tractor will determine how high or how low it lifts you don't want it to be too high because like I was saying these chickens need a little push they're not going to figure it, at least in our experience, they're not going to figure out to move with it not right away. It'll take a couple of weeks. So if you, this paddle flips over and it's too high, they're just going to get, you're going to pull it and you're going to get half of them hanging out back and then you're going to have to chase them and it's a pain in the butt. Especially when they're young, they're still pretty quick. When they get older, it's really easy to chase them down. So this, out of everything I did, this is what took me the longest to figure out. To troubleshoot properly and now I just save this one or if I lose it I'll just take one of these off and then I just trace it because it's too big of a pain in the butt so if I can give you any advice it's simply when when you're doing these I put my wheel about a half inch an inch probably about three-fourths of an inch I'll take I'll measure these off and give you the exact measurements um, down here and you want to make sure that this is far enough out that this wheel this bolt here too this carriage bolt clears this block so i originally once had it too tight and it would catch all the time and it became a giant problem and i had to redo the whole thing so this block doesn't have to be that big at all you just want it to be strong enough that it can deal with the constant wrenching back and forth because again it's going to get moved at least two times a day and sometimes depending where you move it, you might have to be moving it 20, 20 feet, 30 feet to get past some area for whatever reason, if they're staying in water or whatnot. And for us, we don't have super flat ground. So it has to be able to deal with the rolling and the bending and whatnot. So this bolt here, 
is about an inch down. And then here, I measure back. I'll put the measurement here. And then I do about the same thing down here. And then this is, I try to center this as the best I can on that two by six. But I have a tendency to just go for it and see how well it works. And that's what I did is I just, so I, oh, this looks about good. And I secure this. This just has deck screws secured to the actual frame. And then I just take my drill and go and then drill all the way through. And then that's what I secure it with. And that's what allows me to get that nice clearance here. Because if yours, if you flip all the way over and yours is this high off the ground, that's way too high. They're gonna get stuck underneath. If you have egg layers, they're gonna run underneath and try to get as much food because they know these guys have constant food. So you wanna make sure that when this flips over, this is coming down like this one is a much higher compared to the other tractor. The other tractor sits a little bit lower, which I prefer. This is a little bit higher than I like. So potentially I might redo this one for that reason, but for now it works. Where you drill this hole here will help determine how high or low this is. So right here, this one is a little bit lower than it probably should. If I actually came up higher, it actually dropped that down which is kind of like this reverse engineering of how this paddle works, which seems almost backwards, but that that's how it works. And I do the wing nut here, as I said earlier, because these will start to give a little bit and you want a little flex. So then I just tighten them as I need to. So as I was saying about these panels, they're the PVC light roofing panels, very similar stuff to the plumbing type material. There is a UV protector on them and the side that has a sticker is the side that's supposed to be up this side i decided to try to see what would happen this is the back side of it this is the wrong side and i was just kind of here to see what will happen if i flip it this way and i couldn't get it to fit the other way without smashing it down and as you can see it didn't wear as well so there should have been a support beam in here for sure which is causing this but if you just look at the actual panel itself it's aging a lot faster than the stuff that's up properly so definitely listen to that little label and make sure you have the right side up, which you'll be able to tell because the wrong side would curl up like these. So I just like to try things, see how it goes and then learn from it. And sure enough, they were right. It doesn't work this way.